Hey guys, this is Dapson Ishmael. In today's tutorial, let's talk about tables. Tables allow you to show some kind of data on your website in a tabular manner. Now let's look at how to go about tables in Wizard Web Builder. There are two ways to insert a table on a website project. The simple way is simply coming to the toolbox, clicking on table and drawing on the canvas. When you do so, you get a pop-up to ask you to specify the number of columns and rows you want as well as even do some formatting to it. Let's look at the other way. The other way is simply coming to insect in the ribbon and then clicking on table and specifying or selecting the number of columns and rows that you have in the predefined options here. So once you do so, your table is going to be generated. But I like to go with the first approach which is come to table and then specify the number of rows you want. Now the rows is what you have moved from your left to right and then the columns is what moves from the top to the bottom. So that is the vertical one. So if I'm looking at rows, I'm looking at maybe um, about 10 rows, that is fine. And then columns, I'm looking at maybe about four columns, which is also okay. Now before I click on okay, they sell pardon and tell spacing. So we'll take a look at that um, after we click on OK and then see what they actually do. So let me go ahead and click on OK. So as you can see, I have 10 rows. I have four columns. If you click on this table, you notice that there are some settings or options that comes for you to be able to do so many things with a table. We will start with the normal table, which is you select, you can go to properties and even add HTML code to the table and they have rows and columns where you can delete, add, insert and so on to the table and they have merge. You can split or you can merge cells together and they also have alignment so you can set alignment for specific cells or for the entire table and they have borders where you can change the border type or even color to the border, even the border size as well uh, from the table. And I have cells where you can add background to specific cells and I change properties for specific cells and even add HTML code for specific cells. Then you have cell size where you can change the row height as well as column width for specific cells in the table. And then you have table style. So this is where you already have predefined styles that you can choose from for the table that you'd want, the type of table that you'd want to have. And they have um, data. So this is where you want to import uh, data already, existing data into your table. So that will actually be left for a different video. But for now, we are going to be focusing on the options that we've gone through. So if you click outside the table, you notice that all these properties get goes away. If you come back to select it, then these properties come back. Let's take a look at the properties section. So when you click on the property section, you notice that it brings you back to something that we've seen a little bit uh, before earlier at the beginning. So where we have the cell pattern and the cell spacing. So let's look at them. So pattern as uh, a bit of space that you add to a cell. Uh, it's just like the cell spacing, but they're actually two different things at the end of the day. Cell pattern applies to just one specific cell or a specific cell. And then cell spacing allows um, you to have space in between the cell. So let me just show you what I mean over here. Before I click on um, change the number here, let me click on OK and bring some text in here. Or let me just double click in here and type um, name. You notice that this name is to the left hand side or to almost to the edge of the table. Now, when I come um, to my properties, let me come to properties and then I change cell pattern to 10, you notice it will move good. So that is the cell pattern. This is the space that is added around object that are put in specific table. Where are cell space and apply spaces between um, the, the, the cell. So let me go back here and change the cell space to maybe eight. And then you notice that this is applying spaces to each and every cell that is within this particular table. So that is the first one. And then when we come back here, you notice that we have 
border uh, collapse as well as uh, yes so for that option we have collapse and then separate this is how you would want to treat borders in your table you can collapse borders by simply selecting that and then all the border becomes just a thin line or border or you can separate your borders by allowing them to have you know their own um, spaces and then to be on their own now i like to go with the second option which is collapse and then it gives me just one uh, you know single line for the border but depending on what you are working on or depending on how you want to have it to determine what you should do now when you come back here you can change the border width as well so if i select two or the border that is within the table is going to be two if i come back here you notice that there's a bit direction now the direction here is how you have text within your um, your table under normal circumstance or by default it is from left to right but if you want to change that from right to left you go ahead to select that now there's advanced set of options over here as well it says include line height and text styles for better cross um, browser platform so this option is good to have because um, under normal circumstance or initially tables were treated differently by different browsers but if you'd want to be able to maintain the same look for your table selecting this option allows you to have that when you're even using different uh, browsers and then we have enable responsive font so this is an option i also like to go with especially when i'm working on a responsive website so you select that and then the table itself is going to be able to adjust uh, or stick to the size of fonts that you have when you select the option and i have use classic html outputs so i don't like to go with this um yes now the size mode here is the size for both text as well as the table you can use percentage as well as you can use automatic uh, option or you can use pixels pixels is normal the normal unit of measurement we are used to especially when you're creating a website so the size of object uh, normally in pixels unless you'd want to change it from pixels to percentage especially when you're working with table so i'll leave this on that and i have an extra option over here that says uh, stripped row so stripped row is like you have um, this colored background this is not colored this would be red colored background and so on so that is basically what this is saying so if i select header row and then i select a color for this it is going to be applied to it so as you can see this is the stripped rule i was talking about so if i come back here and then i take that off that is i disable this and it's going to go back and it's the same thing for uh hoover so hoover row is when i put a cursor on the row do i want any specific color to show so that is going to happen when i preview the table in my browser you notice that as i hover on every row it shows me like it makes me know that this is what is active or that is what I am currently um, on so that is with the basic um, settings or properties for the table when you come to style you can do so many style options here as well as even add animations let's just move from the section and then go to the ribbon set of tools that are available here let's say you've created your table by using the options that I took you through from the very beginning um, you know using the toolbox option or using the ribbon option and i noticed that you needed to add a column so let me just name this age and then uh, gender and then maybe time so this is the name um, for my respective columns Let's say I missed one particular column that, or maybe two columns that I'm supposed to add. How would you go about that? There's also two ways to go about that. So you simply click on the table and then you have the option to add a column. So either to the left or to the right. Now, if I select left, it is going to move to the left of this column. If I select right, it is going to move to the right. Now I want to add it to the right as soon as to the left. So I select right. It has my column and then left it has my column as well now the other option to go about this is simply clicking to select the entire column now you notice if i move my cursor at different points of the table i see different type of cursors 
So when I move it this way, you notice I have a plus. Now this allows me that I can select or I can move the entire table. If I have this, I will be some selecting specific columns or rows because I am to the top part of the, um, the table. That is why I have the option to select a column. In my, if I move to the left hand part, I have the option to also uh, select a row. Now, I also want to be able to add another column. So if I select the row, then I right click. You notice that if you right click, you almost have the same set of options that you had with the ribbon um, options there. Now, my uh, what I want to do is to be able to add a column to the right of this particular column. So when I come through the options here, I should see it set at a certain part to good. So you have insert rules and columns. If I select on that, it asks me to specify as a column or the rule. Now I'm interested in the um, column. So I want to be able to add to the right. So I select that and then it asks me how many columns do I want to be able to add. So I just want to add one column. And then if I go ahead to click on OK, this is going to be added. You can repeat the same process for the rows as well. So just as we added for columns, you can do same for rows as well. Now you might be working on a table where there's a need to merge two cells to be able to show more data. How do you go about that? So this is where you go about using the merge option. How do you even select the tables to be able to merge them? Now working with Wizzy uh, and Builder, you can select multiple cells by using control. So if I click on this cell and I hold on control my keyboard, I should be able to select more cells. That is one way you can, or that is a way you can go about selecting multiple cells and the table. Now, if I want to be able to merge two cells, I simply click on a table, or that is a cell within the table, click on or hold on the control key on my keyboard, select another cell, and then select the merge option. You notice that these two cells now become one common cell where I'm able to edit by typing whatever I want to type in it. So it could be 20 years or anything at all. So that is a way to go about merging cells. You simply click select a cell, you hold on the control key, you select another cell, and then you come to the uh, merge option. Let me just select this select that and then select merge the opposite of merge is split so if i have merged these two cells together and i want to split them i should just select this merge cells go ahead select split and then this is going to split them into two for me that is basically how to go about using the merge option also when you are working with table each and every cell here can be treated differently in terms of how you can style or what you put in it and so on. By default, you notice that this text that I put in here is aligned to the left hand side of um, the, the table or the cell. Now, if I want to change that, I can. there are two ways I can go about that. By simply double clicking on this and then I align the text to the right or I can also select the cell. And then I align it to the left, to the center, that is to the top, to the uh, middle, or even to the middle right, and so on. These are various ways by which you can style content within your tables. So if it says text here, you simply double click on it. You highlight, you can select left, you can select um, center. If it is the cell, you can select that, and you can select um, the align or, or position you want to have for that particular cell. And then also there are borders. You can change the entire border of the entire um, table or you can um, change even borders for specific cells. So if I want to be able to work with the table for the specific cell, then I go ahead to select border and then I select no border. You notice that the border for this particular cell is taken away. So if I want to do for this, I go ahead to select no border and that you notice that is what is happening. So this is only affected the cell you notice that it didn't affect the top part because the top part is part of the entire table so that is why that is so but if you want to change for the entire table you have to come to the properties 
and then be able to do that over here just as you saw from the very beginning of this tutorial so that's ways by which you can change specific cells then you can also add colors so you can change colors for the borders of the um the table you can do it for the entire um, um table or you can do for specific cells as well now also if you right click on cells you have options to do so many things just as we see over here so you can go to the properties let me see if i can have the style option over here so the style option is, is not present here but i should be able to change the background color um, that is for the cell if i want to now if i want to be able to work with the borders then i have to come to the border section so that is with the borders aspect you'll be able to you know add different kind of borders or yes yeah, so this is border width also which is important so if you want to change the size of the border you can use this to do that so as you can see this has become a little bit thicker than it used to be and if i want to do for the entire table i simply select the table come to properties and then i do that within the options that are available over here that is a border width so that is that if you want to be able to change the background color for the table or for the cells for the cells you can simply select the cell come to color select the color then you are good to go now for the entire table you have to come to the properties and then come to style and then you have solid and this is going to affect the entire table of um, that is on your website so if you want that done you go ahead to do that if not let me just undo this that is how you can go about with background color so a background color can be for cells or can be for the entire table so if you want to do for the table again you select the table you go to properties you come to style and then you go ahead to change that over here just as we have table properties we also have cell properties if you click on cell properties you are able to do different things that is align or even change the color just as we saw for table properties so that is basically the options available here and then you also have um, cell html this is if you want to have or add an html code to specific cells you can use that to do that so we are not interested in that then you also have row height column height this becomes very important especially when you're using this um the table with the layout grid we'll take a look at that shortly so if i click on this um i can specify row height maybe this is 38 because it's bigger than all i can make this 50 and it should change to 50 that is for the entire um this table let me just do that again let me select a um, cell not this row height uh let me make this 50 click on ok you notice this particular um row becomes 50. if i want to do for other rows i can do that as well the same as column width so this is the width this is the height so if i want to change that also i can make this 200 and that particular column should um, expand you can also do this by moving the cursor to the middle part of the line so you notice that the cursor has changed i can click to change this because i've set this to 200 that is the max i um, that is the minimum i can go if i start doing this it is going to um, set the 200 as my like my mid minimum point i can't go below that because i have set my column um width to that it is the same for the um the rules as well if i want to be able to do that you will notice that my minimum okay it looks like this i can't even go beyond that okay so that is that is with the column as well as row so you can see for this one because we have the border here we can't seem to go be um beyond that that is if you are shrinking the size of that so that is with row height as well as column height column height allows you to um, specify and um, that is column width column width allows you to specify a range for which your cells will have to use as a minimum width for the um, columns in the table and then row height that's same for the rows and then you have the table style so if you'd want to have any of these predefined styles here you simply select your table you come here and then you choose and it is going to automatically adapt to whatever size that you select
So you notice these are various um, sites. So you notice these are various styles that exist in the table set of options. This doesn't change if I have merge cells. So if I have merge cells, it's still going to exist in there because my table is only going to contain or already going to contain data. Whatever options I do here shouldn't affect the data that is within it. It should only affect the styles of it. So if I go to split, then I have my normal looking table. If I go back to merge, then I should have my table look like that. So you can go ahead to select any of them based on the type of uh, project you're working on. Another important thing is how do you go ahead to resize the entire table to affect almost every cell as well as every column. You can do so by using this here. So if you shrink it this way, it does that. If you expand it, if you move it up and left and to the right, you are able to resize the entire table. This affects all the cells as well as all the columns and then all the rows within the table. So these are various ways by which you can go about using table and using with web builder. Aside that, you can use tables and um, layout grid as well as layers. For layers, just as we've been able to go about the properties here or the settings here in an easy way, it will apply for layers. But if you are using layout grid, that is when it becomes a little bit tricky. So let me just bring layout grid here and let me just clear this and make this 50 and click on OK. And I'll move my table into my grid. So you notice that this is beginning to behave a little bit funny. The reason is because we now have a fluid property set to the table. So the table is not behaving and on its own at, as it used to be now. I notice that some of the settings are not even active for me to be able to do. So if I move the cursor in between the, the border of the table, it doesn't give me the option to because um, to resize that because now we are using a fluid optional property so if i want to be able to um, do that let me just expand this let me see if i can use any of the options over here oh let me just switch back to my my normal table grid or my grid table over here and i'm trying to see if i'll be able to resize from here let me just Increase the size, okay, because we've now brought layout credits change the whole board game to how we are able to use tables So that is one thing you need to take notice of when you're using tables with layout grid You might not have the flexibility of doing all that you'll be able to do Especially when you're using it with layers, but of course you're able to still design and achieve whatever Kind of table you want to have within your with your web builder project. In subsequent videos, we might take a look at how to use tables, especially with um, layout grid, and see how or various ways by which you'll be able to design specific table. This particular tutorial has become lengthy, so um, I want to end it now and then take a look at uh, that in a different tutorial. So thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.